And we're back doing another video comparison review. This time we're reviewing the Black Diamond Voyager Lantern. This particular lantern was chosen because it is a mid-range lantern among the Black Diamond series. There are a few lanterns above and below in terms of lumen outputs. The Black Diamond Voyager is rated at approximately 75 lumens while the next lantern above it is at approximately 80 lumens and the lantern below it is rated at approximately 60 lumens. So far amongst our video reviews the Black Diamond Voyager is the only lantern that comes close to the RPAL in terms of size and weight. In its collapsed form the Black Diamond Voyager sits at 4.3 inches in height while in its expanded form the Voyager is 6.3 inches in height. And again, the RPAL sits at 4 inches in height normally and does not need to be expanded or collapsed. According to our measurements, the Black Diamond Voyager has a minimum diameter of 2 inches at its base and a maximum outer diameter of 2.6 inches. And that's relative to the RPAL's maximum outer diameter of 1.6 inches. The Black Diamond Voyager also markets itself as a lightweight lantern weighing 4.72 ounces without batteries and a hefty 8.5 ounces with batteries. That's relative to a total weight of 4.7 ounces of the RPAL with battery. As far as exterior features go, the Black Diamond Voyager is also cylindrical in shape like the RPAL. It has small feet at the bottom so that the device may be placed upright. The RPAL, on the other hand, has a concave feature on both ends of the device, which is something that I don't think I've mentioned in previous videos, so that the device can be oriented in an upright fashion. Unlike the RPAL, the Black Diamond Voyager is not intended to be laid down on its side whereas the vertical ribs on the RPAL allow the device to be placed on an uneven or even surface and not roll around. For a mounting solution, the Black Diamond Voyager has two collapsible D-ring hooks which can be brought together to form a captive loop around whatever object you wish to hang the lantern from. There are no mounting solutions on the bottom of the device, however this particular model has a flashlight on the bottom. Other black diamond lanterns do not have a flashlight on the bottom and still do not have any mounting features located on the bottom. The RPAL again has two quarter 20 attachments at either end of the device and with the included D-ring which can be attached to either end or both ends at the same time, the device can be mounted to numerous objects with an object like the Night Eyes s -beaner. Similar to the other lanterns we've reviewed, the Black Diamond Voyager has a single button for user operation. This is the only way to control the brightness settings and modes that are included with the device. And that is relative to the RPAL, which has a single button for on and off usage, and two buttons for brightness adjustment and mode transitions. And again, feature-wise, the Black Diamond Voyager comes closest to the RPAL in terms of brightness. It has an adjustable brightness mode where you can adjust the brightness whether in lantern mode or flashlight mode or the unique mode where both flashlight and lanterns are activated. In order to adjust the brightness, you turn the device on and then hold the brightness button until the device starts to dim. Once the device starts to dim, it will start to cycle between full brightness and lowest brightness settings. There are no discrete numbers of steps that are listed in the instruction manual. The device simply starts and stops at an arbitrary value. Compared to the RPAL, which has 15 discrete logarithmic settings, again this means that every two clicks the RPAL doubles in brightness or decreases in brightness. This is over a 100 to 1 range, 
whereas the Black Diamond Voyager only has a 7.5 to 1 range in brightness. Each step is discrete and can be reached at an exact point at any given time. Now to be fair to the Voyager, the flashlight mode of the device has a 5 to 1 range in brightness settings where its maximum light output is 50 lumens and its minimum light output is 10. The brightness for the flashlight mode is adjusted in a similar manner to the lantern. The uh, brightness adjustment button actually controls both modes at the same time as you can see. And this is regardless of whether the device is in the flashlight, lantern, or simultaneous mode. Unfortunately, the Black Diamond Voyager does not have a beacon or SOS strobing mode. The only features the Voyager has are the brightness adjustments and the toggling between flashlight, lantern, or simultaneous mode. The RPAL, on the other hand, has both SOS and flashing modes. Both devices have a low battery indicator. The Black Diamond Voyager accomplishes this through a LED indicator whereas the RPAL alerts the user through a flashing interface and this occurs at any brightness setting and occurs at roughly 10% battery level. The battery power indicator as it's referred to on the Black Diamond Voyager has three distinct colors to indicate battery level green indicating greater than 50% power remaining, orange meaning 25 to 50% power remaining, and red indicating less than 25% of battery power remaining. One thing that is unique to the Black Diamond Voyager that we have not yet seen in any of the lanterns we have compared the RPAL to is the ability to retain the mode that it was last set in. According to the instruction manual, after setting the Black Diamond Voyager to a particular mode, it will remember the state that it was last left in. Also, in terms of brightness setting retention, according to these instructions again, the Black Diamond Voyager will retain its brightness setting for a maximum of 10 minutes until the device is turned back on again. Relative to the RPAL, which will always remember the mode and brightness setting in, regardless of when and where it was set. The device can be turned on and off for an indefinite amount of time and the device will always return to the brightness setting and mode that it was last left in. The Black Diamond Voyager advertises an IPX4 rating which means that it is neither dust proof nor waterproof However, it can withstand a splash of water. Given initial inspection of the device, I am rather dubious of this fact as there are numerous entrances to the battery compartment when the device is expanded. However, when fully collapsed, it is rather believable that the device can withstand a splash of water. Relative to the RPAL, which is rated IP67, which means that it is both dustproof and waterproof, I believe the RPAL comes out ahead. The advertised runtime for the Black Diamond Voyager in lantern mode is approximately 13 hours at max brightness, which is 75 lumens and 100 hour at the minimum brightness which is 10 lumens. In the flashlight mode of this particular device it rates itself as 65 hours at maximum brightness with uh, 50 lumens and 100 hours at the minimum brightness level of 10 lumens. The RPAL on the other hand rates itself at a 
maximum of 300 hours at its lowest brightness setting and approximately three hours at its maximum brightness setting which is approximately 300 lumens. The Black Diamond Voyager does not list the make or model of the LEDs that it uses inside any of its lanterns. One can only guess that they are generic surface mount LEDs similar to the Rayovac Sportsman. The RPAL uses three Cree branded XBD LEDs with a color rendition index of 3000K and there is no specific CRI rating listed anywhere in the documentation for the Black Diamond Voyager. So in conclusion, while the Black Diamond Voyager does come close to the RPAL in terms of size and weight, it still lacks a certain number of features that the RPAL has in terms of SOS and flashing modes. And even though the size and weight are close to the RPAL, the RPAL is significantly smaller and significantly lighter than the Black Diamond Voyager. Unfortunately, the Voyager does not come close to the RPAL in terms of brightness output and range, with the Voyager having a maximum of 7.5 to 1 brightness ratio with a maximum output of 75 lumens, and the RPAL having a 100 to 1 brightness ratio with a maximum output of 300 lumens. I hope you found this review informative. If you did, please like our video, and again, please follow us on Twitter and our blog listed in the links below. Thank you very much.